Now, movies begin with a screenplay, either an original story or one adapted from previous work. And after so much isolation, we wanted to get to know our nominees, so here are a few things we learned. The writer-director of Judas and the Black Messiah, Shaka Kings, I, uh, that's my cousin. <laughs> it's not, but in my head, he is. <laughs> His first movie job was an extra on a film called 30 Days, directed by Jamal Joseph, a former Black Panther. And for co-writer co Will Burson, being the office manager for John Leguizamo's Lower East Side films, stoked the fire in him to tell his stories. And for co-writer Kenny Lucas, watching City of God in college inspired him to be a filmmaker instead of getting a PhD in philosophy. And his brother Keith Lucas was in law school when he realized his love of film. Lee Isaac Chung, writer of Minari, whose first film job was producing educational films in New York, remembers seeing E.T. for the first time as a child, standing up wide-eyed in the movie theater the entire time. That is so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Emerald Fennell, girl, you took time off from playing Camilla Bowles in The Crown to write, produce, direct, promising young woman while you were seven months pregnant during a 23-day shoot. Girl, you earned the title of that film. <laughs> Darius Martyr supported his 10-year journey to making Sound of Metal with a sushi catering business in Vermont. His co-writer brother, Abraham Martyr, was a musician and composer and co-writer Derek C. and Francis' first job was a friend's get-rich-quick scheme filming dogs' faces on, to put on coffee cups called puppy mugs. Derry, <laughs> let me get one of those mugs. <laughs> it, it, yes, and Aaron Sorkin, writer-director of Trial of the Chicago 7, he started, yes. He started his career in movies by ripping tickets and making the popcorn in his neighborhood theaters. See, you never know. The guy serving the popcorn could be the next Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to Emerald Fennell, promising young woman. Oh, they said write a speech, and I didn't, because I just didn't think this would ever happen. And I'm going to be in trouble with Steven Soderbergh. I'm so sorry. I don't want him to be cross with me. Um, oh, my God, he's so heavy, and he's so cold. I've got to put him down. So the only speech I ever wrote was when I was 10, and I, I, uh, I had a look to see if there'd be anything useful from it, but unfortunately, mostly thanked Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell, who was my very uh, supportive husband. Um, unfortunately, uh, he hasn't been as, as much a part of my life as I'd hoped, and so that speech is not that useful. But all I can say is trying very hard not to cry, which is very difficult as an English person because I don't cry ever. ever. Um, this film was made by the most incredible people in the world who made it in 23 days just and brought their complete genius and love and humor to it. And I have so many people to thank. I feel mortified that I'm here by myself when it's not just my job at all. I want to thank Kerry Mulligan for being not only the most talented person in the world, but the kindest and the funniest. Um, I want to thank the producers for standing behind this film always and, you know, never giving up and um, lucky chap, focus, film nation, the cast and the crew, the greatest in the world, um, the kindest in the world. They just made me look good. And again, I am just so grateful. Finally, my family, mom, dad, Coco, oh, um, my husband, Chris, um, <clears throat> oh, come on, come on. Our son, who did not arrive until a couple of weeks after shooting, thank 
God, because I was crossing my legs the whole way through. So thank you all so much. Steve and I hope that was all right. Thank you.